Hey, it's Mike here, and today we're gonna to cover the recent United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, AKA IPCC Climate Report, which has been referred to as the world's most important climate report. It is meant to dictate climate policy, but this most recent version had quite a few omissions that we know about because of some juicy, juicy leaks, various leaks, these leaks exposed what are really outrageous requests, which ended up being fulfilled, which are you know directly traceable to various special interest groups, including fossil fuels, but a lot of influence by the meat industry. You know, we can trace exactly how major meat statements were just deleted, and this is all quite complicated. A lot of reports going on and leaks going on, and we're gonna make it simple, so let's just go. So what is the IPCC directly from their website? Quote, the intergovernmental panel on climate change is the United Nations body for assessing the science related to climate change. To my knowledge, it is the most influential group on the topic of climate change. Well, maybe it's second to the fossil fuel lobby's influence. Yeah, probably. And they come out with various reports. We'll get into another one later, but the main one we're looking at here is the massive 3,000 page report this time, and a really important aspect of it is also the summary for policymakers. That's honestly probably what most people are reading. It's only 30 pages long. It has all of the important stats in it. And of course, it takes a while to make this document. And in 2021, we got a leaked draft of not just the summary, but a good chunk of the report as well. And it showed what direction they were going in. Now, this is made by the scientists at the I. IPCC yet to be changed by any other countries and their interests. And they said things like, quote, plant-based diets can reduce greenhouse gas emissions by up to 50% compared to the average emission intensive Western diet. That is huge. They had statements about Meatless Monday, about meat taxes, and about beef's super high environmental footprint. And they just had an urgent message overall about lowering fossil fuels as much as as possible and even some things in there about how you know the richest 10% of people are emitting a ton and that needs to be dealt with as well as special interest and all these things that really should be in a report like this if we want to mitigate climate change stop it so this leak which was by scientists rebellion that was showing good things but then we have to move on to the final report before we get to the other leaks and that was the one that just came out a couple weeks ago people pretty quickly noticed that a lot was missing a lot of very important things First of all, that statement about plant-based diets reducing emissions by 50%. All that other stuff I talked about, the meatless Monday, the meat taxing, as well as the harder line on fossil fuel special interests and the wealthy, boom, all of that was gone. Not only were any negative statements about beef removed, but the word meat does not even appear in it at all. So how did this happen? Well, the IPCC, you know, being a wing of the United Nations is of course made up of different nations and they decided to make it part of their process to have input from various countries. And this translates directly into line by line suggestions by countries whose largest industries, of course, can have a lot of influence on them. And when they met to talk about this and changes, there was a days long debate. A lot of the representatives had to go home, some of the ones fighting to keep these things in. But then, of course, the ones that had a strong mission from industry were able to stay and perhaps give more influence. Who knows what really happened? But thankfully we can look in a bit and get some hints because these national representatives didn't wear their diaper tight enough and some stuff <laughs> leaked out <laughs> to Unearthed, which is a part of Greenpeace who then sent it off to various media outlets, including the BBC who states that the leaked documents consist of more than 32,000 submissions made by governments, companies, and other interested parties to the team of scientists compiling the UN report. Yes, submissions directly from private companies. Not sure which ones got listened to or not, because unfortunately we can't actually see the whole document. However, we do have some spicy quotes. One fun leak statement was, quote, that the world does not need to reduce the use of fossil fuels as quickly as the current draft of the report recommends. And it gets really bad when we're talking about the representatives from Brazil and Argentina, who both have massive cattle farming industries, massive sectors of their economy, and influence them clearly, because from the BBC, quote, both countries call on the authors to delete or change some passages in the text referring to quote, plant-based diets playing a role in tackling climate change, 
language or which describe beef as a high carbon food. Argentina also asks that references to taxes on meat and to the International Meatless Monday campaign, you know what it is, be removed from the report. Literally one day a week, the most bare bones attempt to eat less meat. No, that's just way too much for us. We gotta get that out of there. And of course they did. Brazil also particularly countered statements in the draft about deforestation. However, we do know, you know from a report like this that at least 80% of deforestation, of Amazon destruction, occurred because of cattle ranching. Do we have any idea who is specifically making these requests? Well, in one scenario from Distilled, they report that Rodrigo Rodriguez Tornquist, Argentina's Secretary for Climate Change, requested that the paragraph recommending plant-based diets be removed entirely. How do these people become climate secretaries for a country? Oh, I know how the industry allows them to become one. Rodrigo's logic was that there was, quote, no scientific basis for such affirmations on plant-based protein diets, again, requesting that any reference to plant-based diets be removed from the final text. So he didn't like that 50% figure. Well, guess what? A lot of peer-reviewed scientific literature shows just that. Here's just one example showing that a vegan diet, a fully plant-based diet, emits you know less than half of a high meat or a standard omnivore diet. Saudi Arabia in particular was a country that was trying to downplay the urgency to get rid of fossil fuels. I wonder why. I wonder what they create in terms of their economy. They also wanted to you know, put emphasis on carbon capture technology being like, yeah, we'll just keep selling you our oil and fix it later. And most ironic of all, the original report actually stated that, you know, lobbyists, AKA vested interests were one of the quote factors limiting ambitious transformation. <laughs> But it's funny, that was not included in the final version because of those vested interests. I just realized I'm wearing a vest. I should probably take it off. But I do wanna emphasize that there are people pushing all this stuff in the IPCC. The scientists there are trying to do this. And that is evident from a 2019 report on land use titled Climate Change in Land. You know, it's this one, it's 874 pages long. And it says, quote, consistent evidence indicates that in general, a dietary pattern that is higher in plant-based foods, such as all those plant-based foods and lower in animal foods is more health promoting and associated with lower environmental impact in terms of emissions, energy, land, and water use. And they also said that meat, quote, was consistently identified as the single food with the greatest impact on the environment. Damn. They even have a chart here saying Balam vegan diets have the lowest greenhouse gas emissions of any of the diets they looked at. The journal Nature even covered this call to lower meat consumption for the planet, quoting a Ruth Richardson from the Global Alliance for the Future of Food saying, quote, it's really exciting that the IPCC is getting such a strong message across. Ha, that's the slap to the face that you're gonna get in a couple years, Ruth, from this report that just came out. And going back to the context of this large 2023 report that we're mainly talking about here, and it's really fitting into a picture of ignoring animal agriculture's impact on the environment. Of course, we've seen the documentary Cowspiracy talking all about this, and we have new data coming out since the documentary Cowspiracy. As a plant-based news article, you know, on this whole topic mentions a March analysis by the organization Madre Brava found that among top tier media coverage on climate change in the US, the UK, and EU English speaking media, only 0.5% mentioned meat or livestock as a source of emissions. And how might this total lack of coverage determine what the public views on this topic? Well, there's also a late 2022 survey that was done by North Star, again for Madre Brava, which says, quote, industrial meat is currently not seen as a key cause of global warming, despite driving more emissions than all cars in the world. You know, with it collectively ranked as the second smallest contributor to climate change on the list that they asked about. To highlight the redonkulousness here, deforestation ranked number two on the list, yet livestock is responsible for, again, as that report mentions, at least 80 percent of Amazon destruction, which is of course a direct result of people deciding to eat and then buying beef. And so yeah, maybe it is also due to people's personal biases because the same survey found that 32% didn't want to give up meat because it's nice. In other words, they like the taste. Having a habitable planet 
is also nice. And I might as well quickly mention that the FAO is also part of the UN and they've done multiple reports on the impact of livestock. And the reports vary from 14.5 to 18% of the world's emissions coming from livestock, which is on a 100 year global warming time frame. If you move it up to a 10 or 20, it is way more dramatic than that. In the end, it appears that the meat industry is the new oil industry when it comes to lobbying and pressuring groups to change the climate change message. I mean, we have these initial statements about how plant-based diets are great, they're 50% lower emissions, meatless Mondays, meat taxes, and all of that. Then income large meat producing nations and other special interests, which were somehow able to, I'm not exactly sure how, get all of those statements omitted from the final summary. So what can we do about this? I wish I had all the answers, but at the very least, we can keep on trying to educate people about diets impact on climate change. And if we can get enough people to stop buying these products, then these companies become less powerful. They have less of a hold on their local governments, which would then have less of a hold in this scenario with the UN. Anyway, let me know down below if there was anything I missed about this. If any of you have looked at it, it's really frustrating. I know it can be annoying to watch videos that are frustrating, but we can be frustrated together. <laughs> so anyway, feel free to like and subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.